Hello everyone and welcome to the Ask BR on Nachiar Bala's new film uh, Victor Das asks I could see a lot of people discussing Nachiar as a different movie in what way is it different except having a so called positive climax the tone is different right the flavor is different uh, the it's a much more gentle kind of film uh, usually there is a sense of a very cruel destiny uh, where you know now whatever you do nothing is going to turn out right in bala's films but here they, that that sense is not there it's it's a much more positive film so i don't think it's just the climax that's positive the film itself is positive because through the things the bad guys get punished uh, you know the good guys get to save the day and uh, even if you look at the very last scene it's a very very positive and life affirming scene so i think that's a very different thing for bala aishu asks nachar is a very different movie how impactful did he want the movie to be with a topic like this and still make the run time as short as 1 hour 40 minutes does this focus on the sharp and smart screenplay or the editing uh it's difficult to say because editing is not just the reduction of screen time or the increase like it's not like if a movie is long it's been badly edited or if a movie is short it's been well edited i i think it's just the screenplay this is all the story they had to tell and they told it well actually if you look at it most tamil films are about 90 to 105 minutes long one and a half hours to 1 hour 45 minutes you can finish it off it's because there is so much extra padding that they become 2 hours 15 minutes 2 hours and all that see and, and i'm i'm very sure that in a few years the running time is going to come down because see one in the 60s and all 3 hour movies used to be very very common uh, now we cannot sit through 3 hour movies it's it's become impossible because you know we've gotten used to like uh, so much of multitasking during stuff so concentrating on one thing for 3 hours becomes so difficult and as this changes i'm pretty sure that the run time will come even more so i think it's more the screenplay they just decided that this is all they wanted to do we'll just have one song we won't do too much of you know other things and all that see if you look at an earlier bala uh, thing that like in pitamagan for instance there is that simran item number kunguma pohe konj pura bhe that takes about you know like 5 minutes of screen time all that is gone here it's a very clean kind of narrative so it it's a, it's i think it's more the screenplay ganapati durai swami asks what is your take on the movie's length we just talked about it your views on jyotika's performance i think it's more of casting because the thing is some actors uh, you know they just find uh, they it's it's a question about fitting now let's take uh, simran right uh, she acted in a serious role in kanathil muthamittal now the point is that that character is a fairly generic tamil character as in they are not supposed to have a particular accent they're just a generically urban uh, tamil character so with a bit of directorial input and with the actress's input you can pass off that character but when you get more rooted in in a kind of milieu like this cop who's angry and all these things when you have to swear and things like that when you're getting into a slightly different zone then the, then it becomes a little more problematic if uh, the character and the actor kind of don't fit exactly so it's like a soft actor being asked to play a hard character can it be done i'm pretty sure it can be done i'm not saying it's impossible but here i don't think either bala or you know he wasn't kind of going to that zone and he didn't push it enough i think so that's what the problem was in the in performance and i think jyotika was kind of miscast in the film jagat shankar says whether the mystery moments in the second half felt ambiguous and the late, latter half uh lagging see first of all it's only the second half that it suddenly turns into a mystery and then you have all the the things coming about you know this person is arrested and then he's let go and this person is arrested and he's you know something else happens he's uh, thought of to be the culprit all these things happen too quickly we barely get to know who these people are uh, we you know we we don't register anything about them it's not a shock to us because they could have been anybody to so random uh so it's it's uh, you know all these things are are were not done well in the film at all so the mystery moments no i don't think they worked at all kavilan says balas changed his approach from his previous outings could he point to the difference by comparing well first the it's a female centric movie he's never made a female centric movie before and it's a first film without despair you know in uh, earlier bala if you knew that the girl was pregnant in the first scene you pretty much knew how the movie would end especially if you remember the last scene of tare tapate <laughs> but this is a very different kind of ending it's such a positive and hopeful thing so there's no despair in this film and uh, you know I, i think that's that's the main thing that's different from his previous outings that he's chosen to tell a a mystery first of all even that is a new thing in his in his films right because who done it is not a bala thing 
second thing is a character that's introduced as a catalyst for another character to change that is this through this uh, ivana character the nachiar character also kind of changes her outlook towards life which we'll talk about a little later so that is the whole thing and i think that's all new for bala so vijay asks your opinion on the fence surrounding the logo of the nachiar movie the fence i think is just the the nature of the character it's like you know the the tough uh, kind of nature of the character i think it's just a little visual thing to depict that vijay asked was the role of nachar not fulfilled due to personal image of jyotika in many places the character was calm when i thought she would burst see these things are also uh, because of the writing i don't know whether bala took into account jyotika's image but having jyotika utter that swear word that we saw on the trailer i don't think he was particularly concerned about that i you know because otherwise he would not even have made her do that so i think the problem was more about the writing because this story is about nachar's transformation at first she's just like i need justice i'm i'm upholding justice at any cost that's her whole thing in the middle we get this di- dialogue where she speaks to her assistant feroz who played by rockline venkatesh where he says on the ponnuk nyayam kadakanuma nalladu nadakanuma that is should is justice more important or the fact that the girl leads to do a good life and that kind of is the crux of the thing is what is important for this girl is it necessary to bring the culprits to uh, justice and and see her do that or the fact that she kind of goes she's such a young girl i mean you don't need to get her into this and get her into courts of law and things like that or or, or even vigilante justice so that is what the arc is about the transformation of nachia from one kind of person to another kind of person but i think you know in trying to make the character more mass like uh, you know they call a prof- uh, ninga police out a professional rowdy or king and things like that i think that that focus was lost and these aspects of the character came more into focus that she's very brutal and things like that so i think the writing itself was quite problematic rajesh has uh, i thought the humor in the first half and the interval block twist was well done but i thought the second half was underwhelming in terms of writing your thoughts yeah we just talked about that the humor is always good in a bala film that's very surprising because he for a person who's so dark most of the time he writes some great humor i don't know what's wrong with him i don't know re ஜோதிஷ் how do this specific scene impact the film i think uh, that scene came out of nowhere again because see when you're showing bad things done to the villain we kind of have to know him enough of a bad guy so we say okay you know this is what should be done to him we should almost like be cheering for you know the hero to be vanquishing the villain but here the villain is introduced at such a late stage in such a random manner and he's practically out in three three four scenes so it's it that that whole act of vigilante justice felt really weird uh, hari prasad asks wasn't it too much of a red herring showing kartu's own in a negative shade and then saying the man is actually very good person yeah actually yeah because again this comes back to the earlier point i talked about that we aren't really shown or asked to spend time with the characters very much so even when this man comes in right his name is muni andi or something when he comes in this kartu's manager guy we get one scene with him and then suddenly he's picked up as a suspect then there's a red herring where we are made to suspect that you know maybe he's because he picks up ivana when she's walking on the road in the truck and then we think maybe okay he's going to rape her or something all these are very like like very bad red herrings and they kind of impacted the movie for me uh, victor das says bala has told in many interviews that he is a big fan of jyotika did you find any scenes reflecting the same uh, i don't know if uh, the fandom showed as such because you know when uh, you know over the past few days after sri devi's uh, demise i've been reading ram gopal varma's uh, blogs and there is a director who worship the heroine you know so you know when you see shanam shanam or when you see uh, you know the way he talks about her the way he constructs scenes for her everything you know it is obvious that the director is such a big fan and his whole film is a kind of an homage but i don't see that happening here he's pretty much written a part which is fairly like within this this ambit it's not a star kind of part it's more an actor kind of part uh you know because even when you notice some something like aram you can see that nayantara's image is being pandered to because they show her walking in slow motion and things like that whereas here none of that is there so you know it's a fairly cleaner 
kind of uh, you know a, a director using a star ganesh says is nachar bala's venture into commercial filmmaking because you know he, that the arjun reddy remake is coming up i think all bala films are commercial in a way i don't think he really makes an art film uh, you know there's humor there's song and dance there's lots of sentiment there's a lot of crowd pleasing uh, stuff in his film so he commits himself to entertaining the audience in the parts that he's not being too gory and things like that so even in non kadavul the way he handles the urpudigal as he calls them the the beggars uh, you know you don't there's a huge amount of empathy and a huge amount of uh, humor in which he treats them as a very matter of fact way he doesn't say ayo paavam all the time you know he kind of treats them with humor and because of that we also kind of treat those characters with with a bit of lightness that we would not get in another movie and the yana palam engada irukka and marugamala gopi athaloda sarachala kuduthundi chogusa maileri irukkira kattiya tour adichittu vandute he's always been commercial one but the second thing about the arjun reddy movie i think it's going to be really interesting to see this because for me when i saw arjun reddy one of the movies that immediately sprang to mind was sedu because you're talking about a very similar kind of a very meek girl being pursued by a a very rash kind of uh, entitled boy and of course there are lots of you know general changes the girl itself is quite a different girl and all that but but i'm saying the general the narrative flavor if you will is is very much like uh, uh, sedu so the difference though is that that is a more rooted kind of thing and arjun reddy is much more urban in its uh, language you know in the setting and things like that so i want to know a if bala is going to keep the urban uh, setting and b whether he is going to actually be able to pull off this urban setting because one of the things i notice in bala's films is a kind of a smirking condescension towards the upper classes even in nachar when you see there's a very bizarre uh, scene where in the judges chambers where this this upper class girl is wearing a a t-shirt that says fuck you i mean i, I looked at that and i'm like what is this why is this uh, girl wearing this bizarre t-shirt who wears that kind of t-shirt first of all uh, I, is it are we supposed to, it's not supposed to be real is it supposed to be some kind of comment that bala is making i don't know it's very weird vignesh chandrashekar says some people felt the precise form of the movie to be not enough are we not aspiring to understand the writer's vision apart from having our subjective views see the point is i've said this many times before there is no such thing as an objective view on a movie everybody is because we all have our own windows our little prisms through which we watch our film so the idea is to get into a space where we interact with a film and empathize with it and kind of not just say you know it didn't work for me therefore the movie is bad kind of thing but get into a zone where we're able to it, like talk to the film or or get into it that that much we can do but we cannot get into the writer's head or the director's head and see what kind of movie they originally wanted to make because there are so many changes that happen between the original conception of a movie and by the time the movie reaches us so we don't we cannot do that ever maybe later if the director talks about the movie or the writer talks about the movie we can say oh idna panna paathaangala this is what they tried to do that is possible but while watching the movie it's very difficult to get into that writer's head space or director's head space and i won't say it's difficult it's impossible to do that aruk says discuss something you find unique in bala sir's filmmaking or something you like the most i think the unique thing is the amount of provocation that that he does you know uh, like uh, in tare tapatai which is a movie that i actually didn't mind because a lot of people did not like it at all i actually didn't mind that at all and definitely compared to nacher i i kind of prefer it a lot uh, there is a man who who kind of compares a cesarean operation to splitting open a jackfruit and scooping out the flesh uh, you know i can't think of the even the dialogue made me like like it just made me cringe you know but that's also an insight to the character it's not just something about shocking uh, the the audience it's, it gives an insight see if a man is capable of speaking like this you kind of know what kind of man it is so that kind of fits with the film உங்களுக்கு தேவை உசுரோட புள்ள இந்த பலாபழத்தை பக்குவமா புலந்து தனியா சொலைய மட்டும் எடுத்து கையில தர போதுமா போங்க போங்க தட் இஸ் சம்திங் தட் தட் பாலா டஸ் வெரி வெல் அண்ட் இஸ் வெரி யூனிக் நோ படி எல்ஸ் டஸ் தட் இன் தமிழ் சினிமா ஐ ஹேட் அன் இன்டர்வியூ Uh, i was at the berlin film festival and i interviewed this filmmaker q and he told me something very interesting see he says his filmmaking is based on the navarasas and the the rasa that he chooses the flavor is bibatsa which is the rasa for disgust you have hasya rasa krodha rasa and all that kind of stuff right humor and uh, whatever it is this is bibatsa which is disgust he wants to uh provoke you and kind of create that that uneasiness see most of us go to films to 
to kind of enter a world that we like we want to be comforted by it right but people like you and bala want you to like be shaken and i think that flavor is also very important provided the movie is done well you know i have a theory that i'm not a big fan of bala's direction i i mean his concepts his execution and i mean his uh, writing his characters are all okay but his direction is for me always appears very strange his editing choices are very odd i have a theory that maybe this is something deliberate that he does because he wants to discomfort us in that also that is he doesn't want us to give a clean well staged movie he wants to quote on quote disgust us with that that way also by kind of making his film uh, uh, like almost like a series like you know like unstable if you will uh, it's it's a theory that i know you know even i'm finding it a little difficult to buy at times but i'm just thinking what other explanation can be there for a director who can think so well and who can uh, think up such imaginative characters and plots and all that but you know why does he keep why the why aren't his movies better directed and i'm just thinking that this may be a theory that that i like to convince myself is because i am a bala fan and it helps me kind of get over the the, the those patches in his films jagan says the main lead except ivana did not create impact not connect did you feel the same i did not get the bala as moment see the leads also the performance depends on the writing of the character and here all the characters were generic that is a big problem ivana is generic uh, now if you look at the relationship between surya and vikram in pitamagan for instance their construct is generic it's friendship but both uh, the relationship itself is written so well and surya and vikram are doing such a fantastic job that it transcends the generic natpuda nanbenda kind of thing and becomes an actual something something that looks very very unique that never happens here so because the the writing is so generic the characters also fail to impress to a large extent that's what happens here mood music and lyrics ask can you talk about shri devi and her legacy in south indian cinema i feel the media painter as a bollywood superstar but her best movies are from the south you know i i, I really wish i had done the ask bhi about shri devi this week it, it happened very late in the day uh but yeah i think uh, that's something that we will do next week next week's ask br we will do about shri devi so do tune in uh, you know with your questions and we would love to talk about her shri shri devi came at a unique time when tamil cinema was changing so uh, there was bharati raja balachandar balachandar was making different kinds of movies from the 60s films mahendran was there balu mahendra was there apart from the glamorous roles that she is doing all of them gave her mahendran gave her johnny balachandar gave her varuma niram so and other films bharati raja gave her padanar vaidinile do i actually like her performance is siga proja called much better and uh, balu mahendra gave her that masterpiece called moonram kare so she was constantly molded in two kind of ways one is this this typical glamour school acting and the other was this kind of acting so she got the best of both worlds in tamil cinema so she kind of was uh, instinctively you know honed that way and i thought she was fantastic here because the directors gave her those kinds of roles and uh, you know one thing that that i keep uh, wondering about is what would she have done if uh, you know had she not uh, gone to hindi cinema and i think i don't know because see i think she went at the right time for her because one thing is in, uh, in the tamil cinema the heroines don't last very long you know they always is a thing to find a new face and things like that so i don't know how long she would have kept doing the same kind of thing uh, and also if you notice the big directors were also winding down uh, the 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 major parts that they were writing for women those were also winding down so i don't know how much she would have i think she kind of was at the crest of that wave and when she kind of that that crest was kind of getting down i think she kind of went off to hindi cinema which used her very differently but uh, let me tell you it is not easy to do that kind of acting you know it's not just that acting in a serious film in a serious role automatically makes one a great actress it is very difficult to pull off uh, a chalbaz or a chandni or whatever it is because if you, if you let's take shavana azmi right she is known as a serious actress she is very well respected she's got a number of national awards but she cannot do that kind of stuff so shri devi could do it that's a magic that she could do this and she could do that she is an actress she will be greatly missed so uh, let's talk about her in the next task we are let's talk about shri devi's tamil cinema uh, her work here with kamal and rajini and all that kind of stuff i think that interesting uh, that's it from us br this week uh, do tune in again and do subscribe to film companion south